NASA has been on the precipice of creating one of the most disturbing aircraft that the world has ever seen for a long time. However, it has often slipped right through their fingers every time they get close enough. But the emergence of Donald Trump in January 2025, as the new president of the United States seems to have sped up those plans, with his decision in March to let Boeing build a sixth-generation fighter jet called the F-47. Could this create a global arms race? How will China and Russia respond? Join us as we discuss the potential unveiling of the F-47 in the United States. Many years ago, battles were fought and won mostly on the land, with soldiers learning to handle hand-to-hand -hand combat and how to navigate rugged terrains. However, as time went on, aerial dominance emerged and has since become a staple in warfare, with top nations vying to create the best aerial offense and defense. Among these top nations are China, Russia, and the United States, each boasting strong technological intelligence and having dished out some of the greatest weapons over the years. However, aerial dominance requires more than technological know-how as there is a need for grit and willingness to push the envelope, no matter how many times they fail. As an example, World War I mostly ushered in the age of aerial warfare, as it moved on from strategic ground battles, launching hand grenades or bigger explosives from the trenches, to witnessing dogfights between biplanes, with hopes that the best man wins. However, at the time, it was more brawn than brains. It was a dogfight with not enough strategy behind it. But the early 20th century has now prioritized aerial dominance, especially with renowned war specialists, including generals who have actually seen combat, declaring that whoever controls the sky has everyone else at their mercy, ushering in the greatest global arms race that the world had ever seen. The United States remains at the top of the food chain with its fifth generation fighter jets, increasing their aerial superiority beyond control, staying nearly out of reach for other nations. While countries like China and Russia have contributed to aerial combat technology with fighter jets like the Sukhoi Su-57, Sukhoi Su-35, Sukhoi Su-30, Mikoyan MiG-35, Mikoyan MiG-31, Chengdu J-20, Chengdu J-10, Shenyang J-11, Shenyang J-15, and the Shenyang J-16, competing with the very best of what the United States has to offer, the United States, as of March 2025, has finally decided to create an aerial phenomenon that pulls them clear of anything that the nations might have to offer. Although the idea had been in existence for many decades, it has often been regarded as a bit of an imaginary thought that defies the real capabilities of science. However, the United States, with its reputation for having weapon-building companies that have helped them defy the odds in a lot of wars, has decided to take on the project. The F-47 is a project that is poised to replace the Lockheed Martin and Boeing F-22 Raptors, one of the United States' most important fighter jets. The F-22 Raptor is a twin-engine, jet-powered, all-weather, supersonic stealth fighter aircraft. As a product of the United States Air Force's Advanced Tactical Fighter, or ATF, program, it was designed as a fifth-generation air dominance fighter jet. However, the vision for the F-47 is to be a game-changing maverick that could turn the tide of a war on its own without the support of another aircraft, like some that need a loyal wingman to scout ahead before they are deployed in full effect. Since the plans of the F-47 came to life, the United States has sounded out the top weapon-producing companies like Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Raytheon Technology, or RTX, looking for the perfect company to flesh out the latest requirement of the United States Air Force. After a long deliberation, the President of the United States decided on Boeing, awarding them the contract to build the powerful F-47, which he described as a fighter jet that will have an unprecedented power. Although most of the details of the F-47 remain confidential, the President of the United States gave away a bit of information on what to expect. The Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGAD, program initiative is planning to build the F-47 in such a way that it is virtually unseeable and undetectable by any type of A-2AD aerial defense system that is employed by most of the top countries around the world. The initiative of the Next Generation Air Dominance created by the United States Air Force, or USAF, is centered around the vision to create a family of systems 
that can take on the responsibility of long-range strikes as a killer fighter jet and also have the ability to function as a hunter fighter jet. However, it was definitely easier said than done. Since the initiation of the program, the United States Air Force has found it difficult to build a prototype that suits the plan to perfection until 2014, when the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, launched the Aerospace Innovation Initiative to build X-plane prototypes for developing and maturing next-generation fighter aircraft technologies. These prototypes created by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency served as full-scale flight prototypes for Boeing, which was, at the time, in need of a demonstrator for creating the penetrating counter-air vehicle, a terminology also used in describing the F-47. Following their demonstration with the X-planes, Boeing succinctly hoped to develop a penetrating counter-air fighter jet that could operate without an uncrewed collaborative combat aircraft, otherwise called a CCA. However, the advancement of technology over the years has created a new conundrum for Boeing, who had once considered having a solo fighter jet for future missions. Leaders in the United States Air Force suddenly had new demands, asking for unmanned drones that could accompany the manned fighter jets on missions. By March 2023, Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall had a clear idea of what the United States entity said the service was planning. For a notional fleet of about 200 next-generation air dominance fighters and a thousand advanced drones to carry additional munitions or perform supporting missions, as expected, a country like the United States naturally has aerial battles in highly contested airspaces, hence the need for complete dominance. However, with the economic ties into making one of 47 fighter jet, questions have lingered on just how much the United States Air Force needs to go along with the project, especially with the F-35 Lightning II and the F-22 Raptor remaining as potent as they have always been with very recent obvious demonstrations in the Russo-Ukrainian War. While the imagination and reason behind the program might be right, getting past Congress proved really tricky, with heavy analysis required on the appropriation of taxpayers' funds. However, in early March 2025, United States Air Force leaders stepped out to debunk the idea of canceling the project, making remarkable assertions about the importance of the project over anything else. According to Major General Joseph Kunkel, Director of Air Force Force Design, Integration, and Wargaming, the United States Air Force has studied what the reason behind the need for the production of the F-47 is. We tried a whole bunch of different options, and there was no more viable option than the Next Generation Air Dominance Initiative to achieve air superiority in this highly contested environment, he said. While his reasons were valid, they were still measured against the dominance of the top country's ability in the air, with nations like China, Russia, and even the demilitarized Japan in the contest to help justify the reason for the hefty investments required for building the F-47 project. For some perspective into the required numbers needed to create an F-47, each one is primed to cost at least three times the price of the tried and trusted Lockheed, Martin F-35 Lightning II, each of which costs about $100 million. After getting a consistent look at the numbers and contrasting the level of the United States aerial defense and offense with other top countries, using data from the National Aeronautics Space Administration, or NASA, as a guide to make a decision, the data already suggested that the United States would need to make some serious improvements to their air fleets. But China's sixth-generation aircraft program was the real spark that initiated the approval of the Council. The awarded contract to Boeing to manufacture the F-47s is estimated to be around $20 billion, over double the budget that was passed along for former aircraft projects. But what makes the United States so interested in the aerially dominant Chinese sixth-generation aircraft project? The sixth-generation aircraft projects in China are created as the perfect design for futuristic use, with 2030 set as the possible date for a flight test. But why do the Chinese decide on a sixth-generation jet? Aerial dominance has always been allocated to one nation as the Alpha, the United States, especially with the creation of air beasts like the F-35 Lightning II and the F-22 Raptor series. While they have been models for top countries like Beijing and the Kremlin to build their aircraft on, they have also been impediments to their decision to take over countries in the Indo-Pacific regions and parts of Southeast Asia. 
For some context, the Kremlin has been in pursuit of the most powerful one of the biggest territories by landmass in the world, Ukraine, with rigid claims that these parts used to belong to the old Russia when the USSR was still a tangible concept before they were disbanded on December 26, 1991. Hence, they had been attempting a takeover since the 90s. However, owing to the stubborn will of the Ukrainians, they had repelled the advances of Russia for a long time. But in that period, Russia was still licking their wounds from the Second World War. Ergo, a conquest was impossible at the time. Fast forward to 2014, the Kremlin decided on invading Ukraine, forcing them into submission and trying to take Crimea from them through annexation. While Ukraine had been annexed for 11 years, Russia had decided against taking Ukraine on. Although in an all-out war with Ukraine, Russia stood a higher chance against Ukraine owing to its vast military might in foot soldiers, weapons, ammunition, and more importantly, its aerial power. With access to aerial monsters like the Sukhoi Su-57, Sukhoi Su-35, Sukhoi Su-30, Mikoyan MiG-35, and Mikoyan MiG-31. However, they tried to create a political atmosphere where they could resolve it with negotiations, hoping that they would be granted access into Ukraine as a Kremlin-controlled sovereign state. Since Ukraine chose its sovereignty over a negotiated peace that allowed Russia control of their sovereignty, the Kremlin decided to invade Ukraine in 2022, leading to an all-out war that has so far claimed thousands of lives on both sides. However, Ukraine remained resilient, resisting the Russian approach with their wit and bravery from soldiers who were willing to sacrifice their lives regardless of how asymmetric the war was. While Russia had been expected by the entirety of the world to simply crush Ukraine in one blow, the West interfered, with the United States at the forefront, leading the charge by sending war efforts to Ukraine. While the financial reload was a problem for Russia, the Kremlin's biggest gripe came with the United States' willingness to send aerial support like the F-16s. However, as the war wears on for much longer, Ukraine seems unnaturally able to hold out as they anticipate a possible addition of some of the crown jewels of the United States Air Force fleet, including the F-22 Raptors and the F-35 Lightning II, both of which the Kremlin rarely has an answer to. Rumors from the Russo-Ukrainian war pipeline have been surrounded with a possible agreement for a sit-down with the United States, which would be in charge of bringing up peace talks and how much the outcome could influence the United States' desire to unleash their aerial beasts. While Russia already struggles to contain the fifth-generation aerial mavericks that the United States could potentially send as war aid to the Ukrainian side of the war, imagine a sixth-generation jet which is virtually undetectable by present-day radar technology. It was the perfect leash from the United States, keeping the Russo-Ukrainian war from escalating beyond the wild margins it already borders on. Furthermore, the same could be said for China, which has been in the southeastern waters of Asia, with a decision to expand into Taiwan, taking over their sovereignty and bending them to the will of the Chinese government, making them a simple extension of Beijing. However, once again, the United States has butted in, stopping them dead in their tracks, using the government-recognized ploy of an act called the Taiwan Relations Act, or TRA, enacted on April 10, 1979. While the United States does not recognize the terminology of Republic of China, they allow the use of the term governing authorities on Taiwan. But more importantly, the act provided the United States with the rights to engage in arms sales and even joint training of their most elite task forces with Taiwan's. Although the act does not make any provisions for directly interfering in a battle that helps them keep their sovereignty, the provision for arms sales and giving aid in finance and military-grade weapons has served as a key in keeping China at bay basically stopping them from going up against the United States, which has, has a much stronger Navy and Air Force, making any war between them largely asymmetrical. Aside from the act, the United States has displayed a show of force using unconventional means to fluster Beijing into a potential surrender before their war on sovereignty even begins. For some context, the United States Naval Forces has deliberately patrolled the deep Pacific waters along the Taiwan Strait using some of their most feared aircraft carriers, like the USS Ronald Reagan, which is a Nimitz cast carrier, the USS Carl Vinson, and the USS Nimitz, 
all of which are capable of taking the massive responsibilities of boarding huge aircraft like the F-18 Super Hornets in the E-2D Hawkeye, and also flexing the maverick of the United States Air Force, the F-35 Lightning II, forcing China into a rethink of their strategy to take on Taiwan. However, in a bid to improve their aerial dominance and seeking ways to win the battle for aerial dominance against the West, especially the United States, which has stopped them from the conquests of smaller countries like Taiwan, they created a sixth-generation aircraft project that drastically improves their Chengdu J-20 aircraft, which the United States seems to have an answer for. While Russia and China remain in the arms race to wrest control of the air beast created by the United States, only China seems to really have made any headway, keeping the United States on its toes. After successfully developing the fifth-generation J-20 stealth fighter, China was then working on the development of a next-generation aircraft. In January 2019, Dr. Wang Haifeng, chief designer of the Chengdu Aircraft Corporation, or CAC, announced that China had begun pre-research on sixth-generation aircraft, predicting that the program would come to fruition by 2035. However, the United States, with the support of President Donald Trump, has been forcing a much closer return, hoping to get their first prototype available five years earlier than the People's Republic of China. But with the United States plan still going through a rigorous bureaucratic process, China, on 5 August 2025, a third tailless stealth aircraft prototype was spotted in China, with a distinct silhouette different from the previous J-36 and J-50. The photo on social media displayed an aircraft with a pointed nose, highly swept wings with cropped tips, and a W-shaped trailing edge featuring a central extension in a triangular shape. Defense analysts speculated the airframe was an early prototype of China's sixth generation loyal wingman drone or a crewed aircraft competing with its already made J-36 and J-50. The pair was the perfect representation of the hunter-killer mission fighter jets. While the photos spread across China and beyond, Beijing has refused to comment, silently obeying the United States laws on the restriction of their forceful expansion into Taiwan. But could that change soon? While the Chinese reflected supremacy in its flagship sixth-generation fighter, there are claims from sources inside the Department of Defense that tell a story of the United States being further along the production line of the F-47s than what has been said in the media, hoping to use its element of surprise to catch other countries, especially China, off their guard. The same source claims that the United States has created a joint operation between Boeing, which is in charge of the military designs, and the aerospace eggheads in the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Aside from being a hunter-killer capable fighter jet, the F-47 is supposed to be capable of unprecedented speed, in this case, supersonic speed. The source claims that the National Aeronautics and Space Administration has been discreetly helping Boeing to test the supersonic capabilities of the engines that will be fitted into the F-47 before its release. The supersonic capable engine is suggestive of an aircraft being able to fly between the speeds of Mach 1 and Mach 3, meaning that it could travel three times faster than the speed of sound. The test has been rumored to be carried out because Boeing intends to fit the engine into an unprecedented structural design that could withstand the heat that comes from the friction with the air when the aircraft travels at such speed. Whether the United States upstages China in their release of the sixth generation aerial beast or Beijing wins this global arms race, only time will tell. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.